Welcome. We want to use the sketch organize solve method to start solving for continuous charge distributions. So, in our sketch system, we want to draw our continuous charge distribution, but we want to do it as simply as possible. What this means, right, is that if it's a line or an arc, we want to reduce it to as many dimensions as possible, probably one dimensional if possible, two dimensional if not. So in this case, right, we'll look at a semicircular arc of charge. We would want to draw this as a one dimensional arc, a one dimensional line right now. And then what we want to do is we want to choose how to build up this arc out of smaller pieces. So the smaller pieces we are going to call constituent shapes because they constitute the thing that we are building. So we're going to choose the constituent shape to build the distribution. And these constituent shapes are going to have one less dimension than our uh, charge distribution. So if we have a one dimensional shape, this is going to be a zero dimensional shape, which is a point particle. If we have a two dimensional shape, then we are going to build them either out of one dimensional lines or one dimensional arcs or rings. So if we have a circle, the circle, its shape is circular, and so we want arcs and rings that also have circular symmetry. If we have a rectangle, then we want right rectangular lines, things like that. So we are going to build this out of zero dimensional point particles. And how we do this is we draw the sh uh, constituent shapes in two places arbitrarily. So for this, I can say that I'm slicing here and I'm slicing here, and everything inside of here is pretty much a point particle. Or that I'm slicing here and slicing here, and everything inside of this is pretty much, well, a point particle. So we've drawn our two slices on the distribution arbitrarily, and then we want to identify the point of interest P so we might be finding it at here. Once we've identified a point of interest P we want to draw our vector from each slice to P. So from this point I will be going this way, and this is my r vector, and this way, and this is my r vector. And it's helping us understand that each part of this is its own slice, and we're drawing our own r vector from each of these points. We want arbitrary because, right, there might be less calculation uh, here at this edge, or here at this center, or here at this edge, or even at 45 degrees, it might be not as easy, but if we have it be as arbitrary as possible, then we don't have to worry about that. And once we have all of this, we want to then establish a coordinate system that is aligned with my r vectors. So as I'm looking here, right, doing this in two dimensions might be really tough, but if I did this in polar coordinates, then I'm really just doing it in one dimension, and each time I'm just going in the negative radial direction. So for my organized step, right, where we have
if we were doing point particles, right, we are composing point particles to make a one dimensional shape, then the differential electric field of a point particle is one over four pi epsilon naught dq over r squared r hat. And so we know then what to do with this. We've done it for a couple of weeks. We find r vector, which is equal to rx i hat plus ry j hat, where rx is equal to the x position of our point p minus the x position of the slice. And our ry is equal to the y position of point p minus the y position of the slice. And then we get from this that r squared is equal to rx squared plus our y squared. But if we're dealing with uh, polar coordinates, we might also want to talk about right, the radius in the r direction in r hat plus the distance in the z direction in z hat. Right? So this could also be r sub r squared plus r sub z squared. So a couple different options for this. And then our r hat is equal to r vector over the magnitude of r which could be, right, rx i hat plus ry j hat over the square root of rx squared plus ry squared. But if we're dealing in polar coordinates, it would be r in the radial direction, r hat plus r in the z direction, z hat over the square root of r in the radial direction squared plus r in the z direction. So we've dealt with Rx i hat plus Ry j hat for a couple of weeks now. But what's important for all of this is that Rx, Ry, or the direction r hat must be variable. We want this single definition of r vector to define all possible slices. And so we need a variable in which we are going over this. Now, all that we have left is dq. If we're in a point particle, our dq is going to be equal to lambda dl. And our dl is equal to dx or dy for straight lines, or our dl is equal to r times theta for arcs. Now, for other shapes, we want to use right the DE of that shape. We don't have space or time to deal with it, right? We're going to build all of this from point particles first, and then we can revisit how we do it with two dimensional shapes a little bit later. So once we solve, we want to write out the DE after we found DQ, R squared, and R hat. And then we have that idea that our electric field is going to be the integral of all of our little DEs. So we need to find the bounds. So in this case, right, we would have our bounds be from one angle, probably zero, to another angle, 180, or pi. And we would then have an integral over this. And then so when we do that, we perform the integral. We look it up in a chart. We ask uh, a computer program to do it for us. We look it up in a table. Or we can actually do the integral if absolutely necessary. And then we use algebra to simplify and evaluate bounds. So this is how we approach continuous charge distributions, right? This Rx, Ry, or R is going to be a variable. It's going to have the same variable as this dx, dy, or d theta. And this is a good check for that. And then we're going to integrate over the same thing that our DL is going to be part of.